It's unlikely Phil Clark and John Nager had any idea how successful the Mustang would go on to be when they designed the original back in the early 1960s. And we're very sure they'd be quite surprised at the number of rivals their mid-sized model would give rise to over the coming decades. 50 years later, Ford's new Mustang continues that tradition of affordable, compact, performance-orientated pony cars. The sixth generation Stang is also the first to be offered from the factory in right-hand drive, meaning you can order one from the local dealership right now. The new Mustang has features Clark and Nature could only have dreamed about. Independent rear suspension, the latest infotainment and electronic driver safety aids, a six-speed automatic transmission and a fuel-injected five-litre V8 engine, to name just a few. And while much of the technology in Ford's newest hero car is all new, its look is timeless and unmistakably Mustang. There's elements of the 69 restyle in the frontal treatment and tail lights that would feel right at home on the fat and lazy Mustangs of the early 1970s. The profile recalls the 65 Fastback, while the interior combines elements of the 65 in the dash pad with a blend of 70s style instrumentation and toggle type switchgear. And while there's those that may question the Mustang's relevance against more civilised competitors, it's hard to argue with the affordable aspect of that original pony car brief. The new Mustang is priced from $45,990 with the range topping GT convertible tested here available from $66,490. For that money, we can't think of another rival that offers the same blend of interior accommodation, head turning looks and performance the Mustang offers. The Mustang's Coyote V8 isn't going to shatter any records, but it's quick enough to have a bit of fun. The tail end is predictable when provoked, and the transmission generally responds appropriately to instructions from the right foot. But the ride has a few surprises up its sleeve. Single wheel impacts jar the cabin severely, and there's a lot of rack rattle over lumpy roads. The scuttle shape is terrible, and in fact, I can't think of a convertible with as much structural vibration as this one. We also found the steering wanders a little in comfort mode, and if we were really picky, then rear seat legroom is a little tight. There's almost this aura that says the Mustang can do no wrong, that time has somehow made it untouchable, but you know what? They weren't perfect then, and they're not perfect now, and to me, that doesn't matter one bit. For me, the Mustang is a car that pushes all the right buttons. It looks the goods, it sounds tough, and it encapsulates an era when it was okay to challenge convention, to be bold and to drive a car that didn't have to conform to the status quo. And if that's not reason enough to love it, then maybe the Mustang isn't the car for you.